Good morning, my friends. How are you today? So wonderful to see all of you and uh, any special guests. We want to welcome them as well. Plus, we want to remember to welcome the people that might be watching us on YouTube. And thank you for catching us there. We'd like to invite you to our Sunday morning worship if you have time. But if it's a different time zone or whatever, um, just we're glad that we're able to reach out to you on YouTube. And if you could leave us a comment or a note, we can include you then in our prayers. When we say welcome to everybody and that we welcome everybody into our midst, exactly who do we mean? Let me read you the first paragraph of our welcome statement. Community of Christ Church is an open and affirming Christian community who lives in God's love and grace. We strive to welcome and include all people because we believe God loves and welcomes all people. And we commit to work for racial justice in our church and our world. Regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, political stance, or theological perspective, or anything else that might divide us, you are welcome here. Thank you, Violet. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the third Sunday in the season of Advent. And um, so if in a little bit, we're going to hear our Advent theme song, Ready the Way, and we are going to um, light the third candle in our Advent wreath. So if you have an Advent wreath close by or even just a candle close by, um, we'll hear the song and then the Jackson family will lead us in um, lighting the candle. And, um, and you'll notice on the screen, there'll be a part where they will, it will say leader and they will say a piece and then there will be the people, which is all of us. So we invite you to respond and light your third candle at that time. So um, I'm gonna ask Inga to share the video that has the song and the candle lighting. Poet Mary Oliver wrote, if you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate, give in to it. Life has some possibility left. Joy is not made to be a crumb. It seemed impossible, but the Israelites returned to their home from exile in Babylon. The prophet Isaiah offered a song of celebration. Come and rejoice, eat and drink, get your priorities in order. Can't you see that God is close by? The people rejoiced, amazed to have a second chance. The end of the story has yet to be written. When we light the candle of joy, we celebrate the one who has come, is coming, 
and will come again. Whatever, Whatever we face in life, life God will make joy possible. Make straight the road, raise the valleys and mountains make low, turning from sin, let the broken be whole, and ready the way. Our worship continues now with the hearing of God's word in scripture. Last week, we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, who was a priest taken into exile with the leaders and elites of Jerusalem soon after Babylon defeated them. Today, we hear from the second prophet, Isaiah, who lived nearly 100 years after the first Isaiah we heard a few weeks ago, and around 60 years after the exile began. This prophet was speaking to the people just before they were about to be allowed to return home. These were the children and grandchildren or even great-grandchildren of those who had originally been removed from Jerusalem, people who had grown up in Babylon and other cities of the empire. They had never personally known their homeland, but had heard their parents and grandparents speak of it often and of the promise that God would rescue them and restore them. But it was a promise that felt far away as they went about their lives in the only home they'd ever known. Grace and Ken Jackson are reading today from Isaiah chapter 55 from the Jewish Study Bible. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Ho, all who are thirsty, come for water, even if you have no money. Come buy food and eat, buy food without money, wine and milk without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, your earnings for what does not satisfy? Give heed to me, and you shall eat choice food and enjoy the richest dishes. Incline your ear and come to me, hearken and you shall be revived, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, the enduring loyalty promised to David. As I made him a leader of peoples, a prince and commander of peoples. So you shall summon a nation you did not know and a nation that did not know you shall come running to you for the sake of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked give up his ways, the sinful man his plans. Let him turn back to the Lord, and he will pardon him. To our God, for he freely forgives. For my plans are not your plans nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. But as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways high above your ways, 
and my plans above your plans. For as the rain or snow drops from heaven and returns not there, but soaks the earth and makes it bring forth vegetation, yielding seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is the word that issues from my mouth. It does not come back to me unfulfilled, but performs what I purpose, achieves what I sent it to do. Yea, you shall leave in joy and be led home secure before you mount and hill shall shout aloud and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the brier, a cypress shall rise. Instead of the nettle, a myrtle shall rise. These shall stand as a testimony to the Lord as an everlasting sign that shall not perish. Thank you to Grace and Ken for that text reading um, from Isaiah. I'm thinking back to the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones in our text from Ezekiel last week. In that vision, as Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, they came back to life. First, the bones reconnected with one another. Then muscles and sinews came over them and eventually skin. And then finally, the breath that gave them life. Now it seems as if God, through Isaiah, is taking the vision to the next step. From once dry, lifeless, hopeless bones that have now come to life, from the breath of the Spirit bre being breathed into these traumatized bodies. And now, and now it's time to truly live. Live fully, enjoy the abundant life that God provides. How might we hear this prophecy today? How might we think about moving from merely surviving the difficult times to embracing abundance and joy? I spent time with members of the Jackson family to talk about finding joy. Hello, Jackson family. It's so good to be with you all. Um, would you maybe introduce yourselves to the congregation? Uh, I'm Ken. Jane. Paul. Grace. All right. And we're missing Emma today. She's working uh, at her usual job with the homeless shelter out in Washington County today. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we miss Emma, but she's doing good, good stuff out in the community. So I um, thank you for being here in this conversation. Um, as you know, we're doing this Advent series where we're connecting uh, the text with the theme for the Sunday and then connecting it with our, our own stories, um, um, connecting it to real life here today. So I will just begin by saying that one of the reasons that I invited the Jackson family to have a conversation about this text from Isaiah and specifically this Sunday of joy is that I experience, and I think many people in the congregation would agree, experience uh, this family as a family that exudes joy whenever I'm around them. So um, I'm also going to say that I, when I think of this family, I think of, I think of good food. Um, you have some chefs in your family, and um, um, so lots of, lots of connections to food. And so I'm just wondering, initially, as, as you all read this text uh, together, what, um, what, what comes up for you? What kind of percolates up as you think about um, this reading from Isaiah? Um, I think it is about the gifts coming to us and uh, from God with no expectation of, of payment or, or paying it forward or paying for it as it comes that the gifts just come um, to us uh, wherever and whenever we need them most. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? What, what are you thinking of when you hear these words from Isaiah? I guess the thing that stands out the most to me would probably be out of all 13 verses, probably the last verse, uh, the verse regarding uh, uh, that of the briar, the cypress, the nettle, and the myrtle. The understanding that you know regardless of what there is at the moment however that may present itself whether that be in a negative or a positive light change will come and there will always be growth in some sort and 
that growth is really up to the individual and up to the person themselves to kind of dictate and be able to nurture and really have a sense in their own growth as a person and growth in their community as a whole. This is a text that is um, anticipating joy in the midst of difficult times. The people have been in exile for years and years and Isaiah is, is prophesying to them and saying, look, God is good, God provides, and God's going to bring you out of this exile, and all the stuff that I said I was going to do, I'm actually going to do. I'm actually going to keep my promises, and there's going to be joy, and there's going to be blessings um, abundantly, and so as you think about these last couple of years, where are you finding signs of joy? Um, as individuals and also as a, as a family in this time? I think we're all finding it wherever we can. Um, I think that you can't really find signs of joy if you're like not like looking for them, especially when we're kind of like shut in and we're closed off to like our social bubbles and stuff. But like, I think it's all around us. I think that if the sun's out and it's nice out, it's a good day. And if it's raining out, that's good for the flowers. It's a good day. I think there are signs of joy everywhere and you can really make like a joyful day if you like put your mind to it. Yeah, I think you said that well, Gracie, in that you have to look for it. Um, perhaps, you know, the Israelites in exile were waiting for joy and goodness to come to them in the meantime, life just keeps going on. And so you've got to find the joy and find the goodness uh, as life continues to move on and not just wallow in the negativity. It has been a challenging couple years uh, and I don't think we're past it. And so every day we have to make a conscious effort so just keep on keeping on and and find that joy. You got to nurture the nettle so the myrtle will grow. Mm -hmm. Nice. So the more you nurture it, the more you give it, you know, the more joy that you put in, the more joy that it can give back to you. For me, it's, uh, it's a little, what Grace was saying is finding your joy from day to day. But for me, sometimes because of this time of year and my work schedule, it's finding my joy as well. So uh, every Thursday is our family dinner night, which again goes back around food. Um, but it, every Thursday is that dedicated time for our family to come together and sit around a dinner table and eat together and talk and catch up and laugh. And it's the planned joy that I have during the week. So. I love that. It's not not just finding joy or paying attention to the joy that's already around you. It's also planning for, making time for, setting aside uh, opportunities for joy. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of making plans, in what ways does the Jackson family plan for opportunities of joy in the Christmas season? Oh, <laughs> oh, we got a few. Go ahead, um, Gracie. We've got, um, well, of course, we like do like days worth of Christmas shopping as families, like together. Cause like, it also makes it easier for like mom and dad. So they like know they're like getting stuff we want and they can also let Santa know what mm -hmm. we're looking at. Um, and um, we do Christmas cookie day, which is a full day, it's like, 9 a.m. to like 4 p.m. on a good one. Minimum. Minimum. Um, we make bonbons and the little Captain Crunch clusters. Mm -hmm. Fun squares. Classic yeah. Christmas cookies. Classic, Classic Christmas, Christmas cookies. cookies. We make Lepsel um, sometimes, which is the best part. Mm. Um, and um, every night, like especially like gearing up for Christmas, every single Christmas Eve. We watch Muppets Christmas Carol. Mm. Like the lamp, not the rat. Like the lamp, not the rat. We have Christmas traditions, and it's not the same unless, like, 
all the families there but if like not all the family can be there like we make it work what about christmas morning oh my goodness we have to wake up mom and dad the all three kids have to wake up mom and dad regardless if you're there or not regardless you will get called in via phone via facetime to perform we wish you a merry christmas including the figgy pudding verse the if, figgy pudding verse yeah is a must if you don't have the figgy pudding verse in there you are not getting to open your present you're done you're yeah, done you're done <laughs> at the end of kind of the christmas kerfuffle and everything goes and things calm down and people have most people have left then uh we turn on white christmas isaiah begins this this text with this amazing like come eat and drink and have delicious food and amazing dishes um and you don't have to pay anything you just you just get to get to a, a um receive and uh, enjoy and I think that always makes me think of like, what's essential? Like what, what's at the heart of all of our traditions? And um, there may be certain parts of our traditions that, um, that cost money or take work or whatever, but at the heart of it, what I'm hearing you say is that, that the family is part of it, that you all, your relationships with each other, your love and care for one another is at the heart of it. And that's, and that's free. That's like, just it's there it's it's given to you and and you just get to enjoy each other in the midst of it the joyful yeah. part for me is all about the family and family is loosely defined for us <laughs> um it, it's it's whoever is family that year i mean there's the core jackson five but then there's whomever else you know that ken might bring or emma or grace or you know, friends that we might have uh, that join us or our extended family and the ebbing and flowing of that. Um, and that is really the, the joyful part of it is just bringing together the people uh, and celebrating that. I'm sure I heard it in a TV show somewhere, but it's the, it's the family that you're born with and the family that you make along the way. Hey, Jackson family, thank you so much for spending time with me. Um, this is a, 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 a gift conversation to me and I know it will be for the congregation. And um, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This helps us put, put me in kind of the right zone too. It's good. I just have to say that um, it brings me joy that um, the Muppets Christmas Carol was quoted in a message. Uh, that brought me joy. <laughs> so uh, the whole conversation really brought me joy. And I just really just want to close with a couple of thoughts, uh, reflections about the conversation and the text. Um, first, a word about noticing and planning for joy. I love that intentionality um, that uh, we need to in, put in place to, to pay attention, to look around, and also to make space and time uh, for opportunities for joy. You know, we might well ask the question, why was it necessary for people to hear Isaiah's prophetic words? Wasn't God going to release them from captivity anyway? Wasn't God going to restore the people to their land regardless? I think the answer lies in what we heard from the Jacksons today. Um, the people had lived in exile for generations. One can imagine that their expectations had shifted, had lowered, that their capacity for trusting good news was limited. Isaiah was priming the pump, if you will, resetting their expectations, increasing their capacity to hear and to trust this good news. Isaiah was helping them look for and plan for the joy. And I think we all need that, don't we? We need that for ourselves. We need that from and for each other. That is why cultivating loving and gracious community is so important. Surrounding ourselves with people who lift each other up, who listen deeply to the sorrows and the joys of our lives, and we listen to theirs, who encourage one another, who have each other's backs. And that has to do with the other reflection that I have on Jane's take on family. 
um, because not all of us have had uh, amazing experiences with families. For some of us, it's challenging. Um, a difficult relationship with our families, perhaps even being estranged from our family of origin. Um, but I love that loosely defined understanding of family, neighbors, friends, colleagues, compañeros and compañeras, the people we walk with and trust to be honest and loving and gracious, the community, the family we make along the way. That's true for us as individuals and as families and as a church coming together, walking alongside those who remind us all of the good news that we are not alone and that we are loved. As Isaiah says, so you shall summon a nation you did not know and a nation that did not know you shall come running to you for the sake of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. This is the word that goes out from our God, a word of forgiveness a forgiveness that surpasses our human capacity to forgive, a word of abundance that goes beyond anything in our wildest dreams, a word of restoration, a word of new life. So is the word that issues from my mouth, says our God. It does not come back to me unfulfilled, but performs what I purpose, achieves what I sent it to do. Yea, you shall leave in joy and be led home secure. Before you, mount and hill shall shout aloud, and all of the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Amen. Our worship continues now with a sharing of the peace and our breakout room small group conversations. In a little bit, I'm going to send you into breakout rooms and uh, Inga has put uh, the prompt in the chat. If you uh, so choose, you may talk to each other if you'd like about like, where are you finding joy in your lives today? Um, and those of you who would prefer to stay in the sanctuary, we will of course provide music and, and images for your contemplation and prayer and meditation. And, um, and then I'll bring you all back together in, in about 10 minutes. So I say to you, the peace of Christ is with you. And I'll see you. Thank you. And I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. I invite Violet Thetford now to lead us in the prayers of God's people. I'm going to begin the prayers. And as you feel moved, Please unmute yourself and have your own petition. Um, at the end of each petition, we will uh, say, Lord, in your mercy and with American Sign Language, hear our prayer. Since our mothers and fathers cried out, since you heard their cries and noticed, since we left the brick production of Egypt, since you foiled the production schedules of Pharaoh, we have known your name. We have sensed your passion. We have treasured your vision of justice. And now we turn to you again, whose precious name we know. We turn to you because there are still impossible production schedules, still exploitative systems, still cries of pain at injustice, still cheap labor that yields misery. We turn to you in impatience and exasperation, wondering how long before you answer our pleading question, hear our petition, since you are not a labor boss and do not set wages. We, build, we bid you stir up those who can change things. Do your stirring in the jaded halls of government do your stirring in the cynical offices of corporations. Do your stirring amid the voting public too anxious to care. Do your stirring in our church that thinks too much about purity and not enough about wages. Move as you moved in ancient Egypt days. Move the waters and the flocks and the herds toward new statues and regulations new equity and good health, 
new dignity that cannot be given on the cheap. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We have known now long since that you reject cheap grace, even as we now know that you reject cheap labor. You, God of justice and dignity and equity, keep the promises you bodied in Jesus, that the poor may be first-class members of society, that the needy may have good care and respect, that the poor earth may rejoice in well-being, that we all may come to Sabbath, rest together, the owner and the worker, the leisure class and the labor class, all at peace, in dignity and justice, not on the cheap, but good measure, pressed down, running over, forgiven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you now to unmute and list your own petitions. Lord, we rejoice uh, with Joseph uh, and his family at the birth of uh, their uh, son yesterday and are grateful. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I'd ask for uh, healing uh, for my uh, uncle Junior and um, peace uh, for my Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift up to you the families and communities devastated by tornadoes in Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Illinois, and Tennessee. We hold in our hearts and lift up to you in prayer the families of the over 80 people who have died in these extreme deadly weather events. We ask for peace. We ask for healing in this time of grief and devastation. And we thank you as always for those who have come to help in the rescue efforts, in rebuilding and in um, bringing the necessities to these communities. All these things we lift up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in this Advent season, as we await the coming of the Christ child, as we anticipate the joy of your presence in our midst, you who come into our hearts and our lives and our world each and every day, Emmanuel, God with us. We lift up all of these prayers, trusting in your presence, in your grace, in your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. And now it's... Uh, the time in our worship uh, for our offering where we give thanks for the gracious gifts that support the mission and ministry of this place. We will drop a, uh, a link uh, if you would like to contribute today uh, online. And um, we take this time now to hear from our worship team, one of their musical offerings as well.
Worship continues now with our Holy Communion meal. I invite you to find your communion elements and bring them close by. dawn of hope rests on the horizon and beams of love reach our doubting hearts. We celebrate the newness of the season, waiting to see how the Christ will appear in our world. Even in our despair, moments of joy can be found as we wait and as we taste and see the goodness of God. The gospel story tells us that the Christ child whose birth we anticipate will one day sit at tables with strangers and friends, building relationships filled with love and grace. We see this as he fed the multitude, as he turned water into wine and ate with dear ones the night before his death. He took the bread, 
blessed it and broke it. Eat in remembrance of me, he said. He took the cup and in his blessing reminded them again when they sipped from the fruit of the vine, drink in remembrance of me, he said. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, light of the world, the word of life. No matter how we know you or what names we call you, you are our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. And together we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, lead us not, not into, into temptation, temptation but deliver, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, the, power, and and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, breath of peace, source of love, font of joy, we thank you for this gift of new life. Encourage us in these shortened days through the long nights of this season and may your joy carry us until dawn arrives again. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our God but not yet because we have some community news announcements to share with you and a sending song. Take it away, Violet. Community news. And the first thing we're going to talk about will be the book club. We're gonna be meeting, um, probably won't be a long meeting next Sunday after service during the coffee hour about 10 45 or so um we're going to be going over the chapters 11 12 and 13 and these are directly related to the biblical passages that people have used to shun um homosexual people and the lifestyle so we'll be delving directly into God's word and seeing how um, how you read it might affect how you believe. It's, it'll be a very interesting conversation. As I said, it's not going to be real long because we're going to be meeting up for Christmas caroling afterwards. But if you're on your way to where we're going to carol, you can uh, join on your phone or an, a notebook, iPad or something like that. So there's all sorts of ways that you can still be part of the conversation, even while getting to the caroling on time. So hope to see you there at both. Thank you, Violet. I, you know, and I would just say that it doesn't start till one and we should be done well before noon. So I think you'll be just fine. Okay. Uh, and if that's part of that, we want to remind you about our flash mob next Sunday at one o'clock. And it's at Arenco Station right in front of El Pula Provence. Um, there's a large area so you can spread out as as distant as from people as you feel comfortable. You can wear your masks. We will be singing Christmas carols. Uh, there will be handouts with the words so we don't have to kind of like 
Hummett. And um, we want to make sure we'd like this to be a gift to the community. So we want to make sure we have a lot of people there. I know a lot of people are already sharing it on Facebook, but if you work, share it with your work people, your neighborhood people, your friends, your relatives. We'd like to have a really large crowd there. We're going to also use that as part of a to bring new socks and we'll be gathering new socks to give to the greater good organization which works with the homeless people and uh, when you're cold and wet and on the street and pair of nice dry warm thick socks is just the ticket i also want to give you a heads up here that um normally we do a winter clothing drive in november and december and we kind of missed that this year but I want to let you know that in January and February, we will be cooperating with Shepherd of the Valley and doing a joint drive for clothing and other uh, hygiene necessities to be able to give to the various um, homeless shelters and homeless uh, people that help out the homeless so that we can make sure that they're nice and warm. So you might keep that in mind if you go through your closets before Christmas to make room, put the really nice warm things aside and we'll tell you where to drop them off next month. Uh, I'll let Pastor tell you about this. Thank you, Violet. Um, yes, we're so excited. Uh, and thank you to all of you who, um, who helped with, um, uh, with the survey, all of you who took the online survey for our collaborative uh, Christmas Eve worship with um, uh, Hillsbury United Methodist Church and Las Naciones and also uh, Aloha United Methodist Church will be part of this as well in some way. So the idea is to join together so that we have opportunities for Zoom and in-person worship to meet the needs of as many of our communities as possible. The in-person worship service will happen at Hillsbury United Methodist Church, 168 Northeast 8th Avenue in Hillsboro. And um, if we could uh, go to the next slide, we can show us the, so this is the schedule. I believe this will, if, if there are any changes made to this, we will let you know as soon as possible. Um, but 4 p.m. an online Zoom family-friendly worship. 6 p.m. in-person worship, again, a family-friendly worship at Hillsbury United Methodist Church. And then 8 and 10 p.m. will be candlelight worship services, and 10 p.m. will include Holy Communion. Um, very excited to do this, um, and so to really meet the needs of people where they are. So if you are feeling comfortable, there will be, uh, their COVID protocols are very similar to ours, so they will be wearing masks, uh, will not be singing in the building, um, uh, but will um, enjoy um, uh, fellowship and, um, and and hearing good Christmas music and a good message. So um, really looking forward to this and, and want you to know that soon, and, and I believe it will be up and ready this um, Faith News, um, a, a way to reserve your spot. And the reserving is simply a way to make sure that they don't uh, uh, go past capacity for um, a safe amount of people in the building. So they're um, we're really working hard to make it safe and, and also accessible to everyone involved. So if you have any questions, um, I'm around during the coffee chat if you, if you wanna ask me, but we're super excited about this and, um, and, it's, and it's being planned as we go. And again, we appreciate those of you who filled out the survey to help us uh, in that planning. So looking forward to that. And then uh, I'll let Violet take the last one. So tonight, if you happen to be free tonight, you might want to go to um, St. Matthew L Lutheran Church in Beaverton. They will be having at seven o'clock a program called Brass in Toyland. You need to um, contact them, which in your faith news, you'll see this advertisement. And there's a link there to contact them to find out um, it, it's free, but you need to make sure they have room for you because they obviously because of COVID, they have to limit the number of people that can be there. But you might want to check that out. It, again, it's Faith News. You would have gotten it on Thursday afternoon. Go there and it'll tell you the link to um, check it out. It sounds like a wonderful evening. I'll have to see if I could put that into my schedule. So we'd like to see you there. And I'll just put in a plug to the uh, bell choir will be part of that. And our own Eileen Gross uh, participates in the St. Matthew Bell Choir. 
they'll do a pre-concert at 645. So check that out as well. All right. That concludes our uh, announcements for today. And um, we're going to close today with um, uh, another uh, offering, worship offering from our worship team. This song is uh, Salt and Light. So enjoy. in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. We invite you to stick around for coffee time, but this concludes our worship <laughs> time together. And if you're heading out, we wish you a blessed week and look forward to seeing you next Sunday.